It's the radio guy, Mike Prince. Welcome to a special session with Coach Byron Smith. We had a little communication gap on the live episode, but it's always, as the saying goes, better late than never. Coach, how you doing, sir? Doing well, you said, Mike. I'm doing real good, man. We'll jump right into this thing. A tough battle on Saturday came up a little bit short. Uh, from your vantage point, give us a recap of that game. Well, I, I have to tip my hat to uh, Coach Jones and Texas Southern. They had an excellent game plan. I think they really, really um, scouted us really, really well. And, uh, you know, they were pre- prepared for, you know, our, our pressure defense, which is kind of our trademark and what we've, uh, you know, been able to, uh, you know, do the first couple of ball games to, uh, you know, to be victorious. So I thought they had a lot of pressure. Uh, I thought they ran their offense. I thought they had guys step up and make plays. Um, you know, but once again, it's, it's always like that. Every time we play, once again, as I think I told you, it doesn't matter the records or, uh, you know, what, you know, where we are, first place, second place, last place. I mean, that game takes on a meaning of its own. So, uh, once again, like I said, a classic battle came up a little bit short, definitely disappointed. Uh, but there's still a lot of basketball left to play in this season, and we're looking forward to bouncing back here real quick. Now, one thing that I appreciate about you, Coach, I, I never hear you make excuses nor complain if this goes your way or this doesn't go your way. And I'm just going to ask this because sometimes, you know, that's part of my job, what I got to do, and we're not going to stay on it long. On a scale of 1 to 10, and how would you rate the officiating on that Saturday night? You, you know what, I, I would say that, uh, you know, they were as good as advertised. Uh, and I would say that, uh, that that they were somewhere between 1 and 10. Uh, you know, <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's classic. <laughs> somewhere between 1 and 10. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. We're talking with Coach Byron Smith, head basketball coach of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. Now, of course, you have Monday off and you get ready for a huge road trip between Gramlin and Jackson on yes. this upcoming weekend. I know it's, it's, it's always tough when you play a rival game. It's tough when you lose. But when you lose a rival game, how quick? Do you allow yourself to get over this? Do you give yourself time to fest over this, or do you automatically start thinking next opponent? You you uh, you, you 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 try to digress as fast as you possibly can. Uh, you know, Mike. Really, for me, I think you know we've known each other quite a while now. I've been working you know closely the last few years. Uh, you know, win or lose, you know, uh, we immediately start thinking about the next opponent. Uh, you know, maybe we spend you know maybe a few few minutes to a few hours. Uh, you know, not celebrating, but maybe just kind of reflecting on a win, uh, even less than that on a loss, and start thinking about the things that you can do to improve uh, because it doesn't get any easier. I mean, every game that we step out and we play, every point that we face, we're going to get the best shot. You know, obviously being, uh, you know, the defending, you know, swag champions, we're going to get everybody's best game. So, you know, we spend very little time uh, dwelling on, uh, you know, the, the loss. Uh, we, we know some areas that we have to improve and get better. Uh, and we've already started to prepare, uh, you know, for our next opponent uh, in terms of getting better in these areas and trying to implement some things that can help us, you know, kind of get this thing going again. But we still feel very strongly about our chances to be one of the better teams in the league this year. Absolutely. Now, you, you still have a very high quality and a team of depth, but it's uh, hard to replace. And you really can't replace a guy like Blackston, um, who was good from anywhere between 20 and 25 points at the drop of a dime. One thing that I've noticed, and maybe you can you can help address this for me, this team is not uh, – you don't take a lot of threes with this year's version of Panthers basketball. Is that by design? Yeah, it's by design because the best three-point shooter of the team is the coach that's wearing the nice suit on the sideline. <laughs> and, 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 there, and there lies the problem right there, Mike, is that, you know, we, um, you know, we, we, we don't have, uh, you know – that Blackson could jack it up, not jack it up, could knock it down from three. Uh, you know, in the past, Zach Hamilton, you know, uh, you know Troy Thompson, uh, you know, we've had guys that can do that. Chance Ellis is still very capable. He's kind of been uh, probably not as confident as he needs to be, and we're working on that with his confidence to try to work through. He's been banged up a little bit, uh, hadn't been 100% healthy. Uh, so trying to get him going. Darius Williams is more of a scorer, but he is capable. Antoine Lister, these guys are capable. 
but, you know, it's, it's all about just having the confidence to step up there and take the shot uh, and, and make the shot, you know, or miss the shot, live with the result. Uh, come hell or high water, the ball goes in the basket, or if it doesn't, we tell those guys, they immediately think, think defense, uh, which I think we kind of got outside of our, our game plan a little bit last night defensively. I don't think we were as aggressive as we could have been. Um, but, you know, once again, uh, you know, we do need to get better, uh, you know, from the perimeter, you know, out beyond the three-point line. We don't want to take a lot of shots uh, from the three-point line, but it, but it can't help. You know, obviously, um, you know, starting the game off, they can kind of get you off to a nice start. You know, if you can knock down a few. But also, you know, at the end of the game, you know, that, that that's when I think the three-point shot is vital, uh, you know, at the end of the game, you know, and, and then being able to get to the free throw line, they're different things. But, but, but we got to get better than there for sure, Mike. We don't take a lot, but, but we have to kind of increase – uh, our number of three-point shots. I think it can be beneficial to us and it can help us. Sure. Now, now, if you had a perfect formula, what would be the ideal attempts you'd like to see from your three-point shooters? You know what, Mike? I would probably say somewhere around about 12 a game. You know, I, I, I don't think that, you know, once you start getting up into, uh, you know, 20, 20 plus, you know, I think that, uh, I think you're jacking it. You know, and every open shot is not a good shot, you know, and, and if you're taking that many threes, Sometimes the team don't think that you can beat them from out there. So sometimes they're not even guarding the three-point line because they don't think you can beat them. Uh, but I think about 12, so when that 12 to 13 probably range will be good for me. Uh, you know, and, and I think, you know, we can handle the rest. I think we got good guys in the mid-range. They were much, much better mid-range team this year than we were last year, and I think we can kind of finish around the rim. Uh, but if we can get anywhere from 12 to about 13 a game, I think that's a solid number that gives us a chance to be competitive. Uh, and have a chance to win. And I know that you're always forever trying to fine tune the best combinations. Have you got comfortable with your, your combinations and your rotations with your squad yet, or are you still somewhat developing those? You know, it's it's still developing, guys, you know, these guys. You know, unfortunately, some of our, some of our players, Mike, and it's the players around the world, uh, you know, their defensive focus is predicated on their offensive input you know, or output, and, and sometimes that can be bad. So what I mean by that is uh, if they're scoring, I mean, every kid wants to play defense when he knocks down a three because he wants to get a chance to come back down and shoot another three. But what about when you're not making a shot? Are you, are you as interested in playing and guarding the basketball? Or, or how about if you know on the offensive end that you're never going to get a shot, are you still interested in playing really, really hard defense? So to answer your question, we're still working with some lineups. I think we got a pretty good defensive unit, uh, with quickness and length. Uh, and guys that can really fly around and get to the basketball. Once again, we didn't get a chance to show really who we were defensively and who we are defensively as we did in the first two games. Uh, and obviously there were some, some factors that, that contributed to us not being able to do that. But we definitely want to get back to, to, to being that four-court pressure, you know, uh, trap, uh, run and jump basketball team that, that can and have our defense dictate our offense and we can get some points, you know, off of our defense. That, that's kind of how we want to play. We're talking right now with Coach Byron Smith of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers basketball program. Took a tough loss on the road against Texas Southern, 71-67. They'll put on their traveling shoes to head to Jackson and Gramlin on that swing. If, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be Gramlin Saturday night and Jackson Monday night, or is it vice versa? Correct. Gramlin, Gramlin Jackson. Yes, sir. Okay, Gramlin Saturday. And th- that is always – a unique trip, and and I I chuckle, and I won't call the player's name out, but when I describe what happened in Jackson State, um, when this kid was going for a, a loose ball, and this fella jumps off and snatched the ball and threw the kid about half court. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's still one of my most um, – enjoyable moments of basketball because um, these people don't realize th- these games get pretty heated and contested, especially on the road. Um, when you look at the mental makeup of your team, are they road warrior ready? I think so. I think you look at our non-conference, Mike, and see, uh, you know, what we had to go through, what we had to do, uh, where we had to play, how much we had to travel. Uh, you know, getting on a, getting on a bus and, and driving four and a half hours after we've been on coast to coast, east coast, west coast, uh, two different times, and then maybe getting on a bus and driving another two and a half hours up to Jackson. Uh, I think we're ready. I mean, I, I think we're battle tested. I think we're road tested. I think we got the mental makeup, as you say, to be able to go anywhere and win a basketball game, uh, not just at home, uh, but on the road as well. I feel very confident in our ability to be able to get things done. 
Um, and obviously, this, this will be a very difficult. I think probably the second most difficult road trip uh, next to uh, you know Prairie View, Texas Southern. Uh, but but I, I think we'll be up for the challenge. I think our guys will uh, handle this the right way. I think they'll respond in a positive way. And I think that we're going to be ready to get back on the court and get after it on Saturday night and then again on Monday night uh, with hopes of going in and getting two victories and coming back home, um, you know, and, 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 and just getting ready to play. Uh, you know, some really good home court basketball. So that's kind of our focus right now. All right. We're talking with Coach Byron Smith, head basketball coach of the Panthers uh, men's basketball program. Coach, I know we're, we're talking basketball, but I got to ask you this NFL question or two. You're a huge Dallas Cowboy fan, uh, yes, but I still like you and you're on my friend list, but we'll be OK with that. <laughs> um, uh, number one, are you pleased with the move that has been made as far as your new head coach? You know what? I, I, I think that move has been, been met with some resistance uh, simply because of the way that uh, Coach McCarthy finished his tenure with the Packers and they felt that they had become dull. The offense had become very stagnant and he was too old school. But, you know, I think anytime, Mike, you can step away uh, from your craft, you know, I think you can be rejuvenated, you know, kind of have a, a fresher perspective. I think you can kind of, you know, catch up on maybe – some of the, 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 the new ways, the new style that, they, that the NFL is going. So, you know, the, the thing you can't take away from Mike McCarthy is the fact that he had a long tenure, I think eight to ten years, 12 years, whatever it was in Green Bay. They were always in the top of their division. They were always, you know, one of the better teams in the NFL as well as, as the NFC. Uh, and he's a Super Bowl champion. So anytime you can reach that level, that, that says something about your about your ability to be able to coach the game. Uh, and here's the deal. I, I just felt that, you know, sometimes a different voice uh, is needed. You know, I don't think anything structurally is wrong with the Cowboys. We've got more talent than any team in the NFL. Uh, so I just think sometimes it's a different voice. And I think that his voice, I think it'll be adequate enough to get us where we need to go and, uh, you know, to get us deeper into the playoffs, maybe with a chance to win a championship. So I do like the fact that I have Mike McCarthy. Uh, and I just think it's a matter of time before he gets that gets, gets those guys rolling. And, uh, you know, we can get back to some how about them Cowboys. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> you and you alone, brother, on this conversation. <laughs> uh, the next thing I want to ask you, the AFC and the NFC uh, division titles are all set. Uh, Kansas City will be hosting Tennessee, and Green Bay will go to San Francisco. Who do you see? will be the representation for the Super Bowl. To be perfectly honest with you, I, I think every year there's always that, that team that people really don't really see coming. And I think this year in the AFC, it would be Tennessee. I think I'm going to go with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, in the NFC side, uh, you know, once again, I think sometimes maybe you can show a little too much too soon uh, and maybe not have enough to finish. So having said that, I think that the Packers – uh, will take down the 49ers. I think the you know, Super Bowl matchup in Miami will be the Tennessee Titans uh, and the Green Bay Packers. Well, we're 50-50 on that, my friend. I'm saying <laughs> Kansas City and Green Bay, uh, even though I said it would not surprise me if Tennessee would find a way to win, but I, I believe that this is going to come down to the battle of the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee has a nasty run attack, a nasty run yeah. attack. But Kansas City can score so quick, so quick. And I, I just think they'll find a way to squeak this one out. But it should be a um, – I think that's going to be the Super Bowl as far as I'm concerned. But um, mm -hmm. we'll see how this thing goes. The Panthers – will be on the road this weekend. And in between, Coach, if the creek don't rise and we get a chance to do this thing live on Sunday night, we'll be getting ready for that Jackson State game. And if all says the same, we'll hook up and try to make that happen on next week. How does that sound? I look forward to my If God says the same, I, I will definitely say the same. All right, Coach Byron Smith and the Prairie View Panthers in a little murky water, if you would. A lot of teams locked at two and one, but I believe the degrees of separation starts now. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. You guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.